And I, I'd like to start by thanking Malcolm Wood for masterminding my campaign and all my official and unofficial assenters. It's very generous of you, and I hope you agree he's made the best of a bad job so far. My um, website is now live. Um, we all agree that the next general election is crucial if UKIP is to build on past success and start leading our long-suffering country out of the EU. I look at just three areas where the mess made by our established political class gives us huge opportunities to win a great many votes. First, the EU itself. Now that Lisbon is ratified, we can expect the corrupt octopus in Brussels to get even more bullying and confident. So it will become even more unpopular with the British people. I don't need to tell this audience how bad things already are. You know the hundreds of examples of expenses and pointless laws which have been forced upon us, ending with our rubbish not being collected and our post offices being closed. But the more and worse is to come. There's the hedge fund directive designed to diminish the huge revenue which the City of London pays to our Treasury. And lying behind that, the government have agreed that all our financial supervision now goes under Brussels, leaving the Bank of England and the Treasury only with day-to-day -day supervision. No doubt, ladies and gentlemen, the new common financial policy will be a worthy companion to those planetary disasters, the common fisheries and agricultural policies. Now, they're also starting to control our herbal medicines, how many vitamins we can take. Uh, and I suggest there might even be a few votes amongst Guardian readers uh, <laughs> on, on that account. Um, now we learn that immigration is deliberately out of control. We must bring it to zero net gain. I've got a new statistic from Migration Watch. In the nine months to September, British immigration officers interviewed only 29 of the 66,000 Pakistanis applying for British visas. And then there's a huge pro problem of our 3,000 homegrown potential terrorists. We must move Sharia law up the national agenda. Not let it dominate, but move it up. We must expose it, and we must stand up to it. And then the three main parties like the EU for some really idiotic reasons. Uh, they think we need to be in the EU to help cure what they call climate change. That's what they used to call global warming. Um, they believe, they really believe that the, leaving the EU would cost jobs, when the reverse is obviously true. And Cameron thinks he's going to fight the next general election on the terrible state of the economy, but not talk about the EU. Uh, what about the 15 uh, billion that Paul, the Chancellor is trying to save uh, from the public expenditure and the 16 billion that we're sending in cash to Brussels every year, 45 million a day? Uh, the Taxpayers' Alliance have put the cost at 8% of GDP, or £120 billion. Pounds. So we've got a fantastic hand to play in these areas. And my ambition, like everyone else, is for UKIP to do well enough to force a hung parliament. Then we can start to realign British politics and to um, get in touch with real people in other parties and start the long march to freedom. How could I help as your leader? First, I think I'll find it easier uh, to raise money from big donors and to encourage defections if I'm leader. Um, I would give you the example of Tim Congdon last week. Um, I'm not a good day-to-day -day manager, um, but I have built a medium-sized business from scratch, and so I have learnt to delegate. Um, I'm pretty sure that our success has outgrown our infrastructure. We will need a CEO. We'll need to improve our internal communications. A lot, actually. And we must make our youth membership a priority. We must have them on the front line with us in a, fine, in a harmonious fighting machine. And as far as I know, I haven't any enemies yet in, in, in UKIP, but no doubt that they may come. Third, I'm in Westminster with a voice in the UK Parliament, so I find it easier to get um, UKIP into the, uh, into the, into the national media. Uh, last Sunday, Sunday Express, uh, for instance, uh, condemning the EU as preventing our refunds on consumer goods. Next Monday on the 15th, the BBC at 8 o'clock on its analysis programme, for the first time ever, is going to take a look at what life might really be like outside the EU. And there's a letter in today's Daily Telegraph, which I hope you will approve. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the decision to leave the EU must eventually be taken in Westminster. If I am elected as your leader, I will do my best, with your help, to see that our political class can no longer avoid that decision. Thank you.